Good to go. Um, well, it's always an exciting time of year, uh, getting closer to kicking off Friday night. And I know our guys are excited uh, about seven o'clock and there's been a lot of work put in, uh, not just this last month. You look at the months ahead, all the way back to January. Uh, really proud of these guys for the work they've put in. Uh, we got a few more days to take advantage of it. Just walked off the practice field today. Um, but guys are uh, looking forward to playing in front of a packed house and the fans and the students welcoming them back to campus here started today um, and so it's it's something that we've been working really hard and, and getting there I was pleased with how kind of fall camp went I thought there was some competition in it throughout these guys have been working um, against each other and now I know they're excited to get someone else on the other side of the line of scrimmage uh, that team that's coming in uh, coach Herman got a bunch of respect for him he's done it at a high level multiple places he's in year two uh, at Florida Atlantic I know they'll pre bring in a challenge for us that we're gonna have to be ready for uh, also proud of kind of the captains we uh, we announced the other day those five guys I think will represent us well they've been uh, a huge part of as we're trying to build this culture and doing it together those five guys that stood out with a, a vote that was from their teammates and uh, and five guys that we're proud of with Mav, Tanner, Jordan, Aiden, and Nate. Um, so with that again on echo looking forward to Friday night my, obviously my first experience but counting on a, a crowd and fans and students that can really you know, help us throughout the game. With that I'll take some questions. Jonathan, I wanted to expound on that. This is your first experience here on a game week. Students came in late last week. You can feel the yeah. buzz. I saw you at the band thing the other day, and you said you watched them outside your window. What is what does the buzz feel like now that students are here? Can you feel it? Don't, you definitely can feel it. Definitely a little bit more traffic. It's a little bit slower getting around, and there's so many more cars, and and it's fun. That's what uh, you know, college athletics, college football, but college life in general. When you you get back to school and see some familiar faces, and just the energy on the sidewalks, people going to classes, the event with the band and their energy, and they have been working. I mean, early morning to late night outside my office, and counting on them to to help us out in this game. Hey Coach, um, you mentioned going back as far as January. I'm just curious, with just a few days left until kickoff, is there still a sense of urgency to get some things done, or is it like, hey, we're at this point where we got to get ready to just play? Oh, yeah, well, there's still – the hay's not in the barn. There's a sense of urgency. You think about games, first games, right, the mechanics. Uh, call it substitutions, communication. Um, you know, we got some new, new pieces this year in college football with the tablets and the communication through the helmet, and so we're just – always looking at that. Um, I do feel like our work has gotten us to a good point that yes, we got to go out and play and then we got to learn kind of where we're at. And this thing is not a game of perfect, uh, but we want to be prepared and put them through as many situations that we think could arise on a Friday night. You talk so much about your team, obviously that is your priority, but from a personal standpoint, how are you feeling finally getting to game one? Um, just from when you were announced to getting your family acclimated, yourself acclimated? Are you feeling more excited or nervous? Yeah, you know, I think I'm de definitely excited. Uh, I can have moments where my mind starts turning and you start, oh, did we cover this? Are we ready for that uh, on, the, on, the, on the football side? But again, you gotta get to Friday night and let it, let it rip. On the personal side, I feel like each month, the transition, we've gotten more and more comfortable. Again, I go back, I've been saying a lot, but feeling the welcoming. Uh, with the you know the kids in school getting adjusted, making some friends, uh, playing sports, um, the neighborhood we're in, all of that has been has been great. Jonathan, one you you mentioned about the competition. How many spots do you feel right now solid with with the twenty two starters? And you'd mentioned previously about Montori. Are there any injuries that getting going in that might be an issue? You know, we do not have a uh, one that'll be issue season ending. We've got a few guys that, yeah, but, you know, there's some bumps and bruises through the week. We're hopeful that we'll we'll be pretty healthy come come Friday. It's been uh, competitive. We talk about 22 starters, which yeah, we'll we'll throw 22 guys out there. But I feel good that we're going to play multiple guys at some positions. Think about the defensive line. We're going to rotate through that. We've got guys that we can feel 
we feel five, six guys could rotate in the interior of the D-line. Linebacker, same way. We well, got yeah, two guys will start that, but you'll see more than just two in playing in the game receiver-wise. We will play more than two or three guys, um, even in the tight end spot. You know, with, with Velling, Paracek coming along here. Mola's had a great camp. Mike, you know, you're going to see multiple guys there. I mean, shoot, you might even see more than just five throughout the game at O line uh, of, of a spot or two with, you know, what, what that's competition's gone. So, yeah, we, we're getting close to feeling like, yeah, these are the 22 to start the game, but it might be the second series in the first quarter. You're going to see some other guys. Jonathan, I was wondering, is there anything you're most curious to see how it plays out on Friday night, like the biggest uncertainty, whatever the case may be, and just going forward in live action? Yeah, you know, definitely, you know, game, live action, the mechanics of that. Talk about the communication and the personnel. We need to settle in and, and, and be great on that. Um, curious to find out the response uh, from this team. And I talked about, I think, being, you know, it's 14 nothing whether you're up or down, kind of how we respond and, and do that. I want to be a team that finishes games and plays, plays well in the end of, end of the fourth quarter. And so this will be our first opportunity in live action to kind of see that. Jonathan, obviously Tommy has a lot more experience than uh, Aiden did last year, but you, would you ever consider putting him in for a designated series to see what he could do? Currently, we, we haven't. We got the, a ton of confidence in Tommy, but we have not had that uh, thought or conversation to have a, a set series for him. We do feel confident uh, if he gets in this game, he can operate. When it comes, this is going to be obviously Aiden Chow's first time ever starting at the college level. Um, and he's mentioned that he's just excited for the learning process of this season. How, as a coach, um, how do you feel that he's ready for this moment? And um, how do you plan to just kind of manage his confidence, you know, when he does face adversity inevitably at some point? Yeah, we talk about it. I think he's definitely ready for this. Um, you know, the, he's a competitive uh, player. And uh, true competitors understand it's not going to go perfect every snap and things are going to take place. There's going to be some really good plays, too. Um, but there's nothing like experience. And the guy's been out on, on the field playing big time football before, just hasn't been on the first snap. And so we'll. We'll be there for him to get him get him adjusted, and we're confident that, uh, you know, in his preparation, in his instincts, and how competitive he is, that he'll give us a chance to score some points. Coach, obviously, with the 12-team playoff, that means more opportunity for the team. Teams can get in with two, three, maybe even four losses. I know it's only year one, but do you feel any more pressure to deliver in year one, considering there's so much more opportunity to compete for a national title? You know, I, I think it's a good thing that there's more opportunity for for teams, 12 of them, to to get in. I think there's always you know pressure in this in this job, this business. This is what you know big time college football is, and so you, you sign up for that, um, and you you want to do that. You want to be playing in big games. You want to make it count when you're playing. You want people that have passion behind you know their school, the university, and the product that's out there, and and that's what I've signed up for. And this staff and this team, uh, we're looking forward to that challenge. You established your reputation in a different conference on a different end of the country. What kind of a challenge is this for you to put your footprints in the sand here in the Midwest and in the Big Ten? And will you be more nervous Friday night than you've been in a while? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, when the game kicks off, I'm not thinking a lot about establishing this and that. Uh, I think it generally go through the seniors and we want to establish identity in all three phases. Think about that a lot and we're going to recruit to that identity. Want to recruit heavily in this Midwest and, you know, we've talked about it inside out. I think we've made some real gains on that and we've got momentum. Uh, but it's a day-to-day -day constant process to, to do it. We want to, you know, establish again a team that's going to play really hard for 60 minutes, if not more and compete snap in and snap out. Again, I, I, I'm going to be excited about it. I got some confidence and again, our preparation, these coaches and things, um, those guys got to go out and make plays. Uh, I'm going to absorb it uh, early pregame and then, then definitely try to get locked in. Coach, three of your five captains uh, were transfers. Do you think that says even more about the faith that their teammates have in them? You know, I think it does, the impression those guys have made in a short period of time. Um, and again, I just think we've got a lot of influence throughout. And you could almost cut this roster in half of, you know, first year players here at Michigan State and then the other guys that have been here a while. Um, and there's respect on really both sides coming together. Uh, this camp has been huge, I think, for, for establishing that this is the ultimate team game. We've got to do it together. We're going to need all 11 on every snap. Um, and not just those three, all five captains really represent that. 
Uh, Jonathan, what, when you look at FAU, what's maybe, what's something or a couple things on each side of the ball that stands out to you that they do really well? And, and I don't know if this is a separate point, but is game one of a new job a, sort of a unique game plan thing when you guys have been going against each other and that's really your only barometer? You just don't know maybe like what will be good on a game day against right. a different opponent? Is that a different wrinkle for the it's a, it's a little bit new. And, you know, similar to every season, right, you think something's going to be good or we've had some success, but it's definitely new, the uniqueness of, you know, year one for us. Yeah, they're in second, their second year, and they've got some things established. They've got some returning players at the line of scrimmage, I think on both sides that are pretty good, but they've got a bunch of new players as well, quarterback. You know, we've got some tape at a previous university. Uh, that's a uh, that's a threat. He is athletic, competitive, can make plays. So that's good. someone that's got our attention. The quarterback's ability, um, and then you know you look at their front seven. They got some veteran group there with some guys that have played, and then you throw in some additions and transfers. So um, we've got an idea of what it kind of looks like, but you're never totally certain until Friday. And again, when it's week one, you know you haven't seen these teams, you know haven't seen FAU play just yet. How how big of a challenge is it when you don't really have a whole lot of film to go off of this year? Yeah, you you don't try to ch chase ghosts because you don't have uh, as much film as maybe you'd like. Uh, you got to be you know great in your foundation and knowing your rules, playing uh, within the scheme and being able to adjust. Same thing, offense, defense, right? Defense, you don't know how they're going to line up. Offensively, you don't know how they're going to line up. And think about the communication again up front to get on the same page. Trust your rules and go out and play fast. There's going to be a good amount of recruits in attendance at this game. What are you looking to showcase with this, this first event? Well, obviously, a, t a team that plays well and well together. Uh, you know, on the recruiting side, whatever particular position we're talking about, putting those, in the, those guys in the best positions possible. Try to show a recruit a big-time fan base and student section and energy in the place. and. Uh, something that, that would draw them to say, you know what, I want to be playing ball here. Hey, Jonathan, I was wondering, was, was there any kind of different vibe at practice today, you know, just being that it's now game week, and what's the sense you get from the just the guys that were here last year and maybe the fan base as far as what they're looking for this season with all the buildup and, and you know, coming off a couple of years they'd probably like to forget? Yeah, I think just on the practice end, these guys know it's coming, and we recreated a little bit last week what a game week practice plan would be like, and so now we're doing it for the second time. Uh, the attention, the focus is there. We're repeating some calls because this plan has been – you know, kind of solidified for a while. Um, I think the energy, the focus, uh, and, and the excitement as we're getting so much closer, you could feel that at practice. I'm wondering about the other side of the, you mentioned about the ghosts of, of not chasing without having to film. What are the benefits maybe for you and your staff and program to not have anything really on display here? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's probably some benefit. Obviously, they're both our coordinators, O and D, have a background of what that thing looks like. Um, but I think every year, I said it to the team this morning, I think, you know, good coaching staffs always are adjusting to the talent that's on their on the current roster. And so year in and year out, you know, you do some self-scouting and adjust and throw in some new wrinkles. And, and we're counting on seeing that from them and then obviously ourselves. With the helmet communication on the defensive side of the ball as time goes on, is it going to be more of a, a position-based decision or a player-based decision? Yeah, well, we try to do it in the inside of the defense, so inside linebacker, um, and then you know that them be able to make calls for us, so that'll be position, and then you know one or two guys will be be ready to have it. Um, I think about the logistics, special teams-wise, right? You, you got linebackers oftentimes play special teams, so you want to stay away from the two green dots on the on the field but linebacker for us inside of the inside of the defense coach friday when it's a late friday night when we're sitting here with you no matter what the scoreboard reads for the fan base for your team for the media how much does it being the first game play into that yeah you know i think you you're always learning the first game i know there's gonna be some excitement and then you know hopefully this you know the game we're going to compete for, for like i say 60 minutes and looking forward to then the, improving from game one to game two, however this thing plays out, and that's a constant message you're going to hear. Because um, this, this is a game of development. The, you know, the best teams play their best ball at the end of the year, sticking to a process. So game one, we've got to learn a ton, compete for a while, and then go back to work the next day. Coach, not to think too far ahead, but is there more weight on week one knowing that you have a Big Ten game week two? You know, those things, the schedule is what it is. Um, 
I don't know if it adds weight to, to the first game. We understand that we're right into Big Ten play in week two, but our entire focus has been on this first one. And I know this first one's going to be really important to kind of learn a ton about where we're at, what we've got to clean up, because we're going to you know, be in league play seven days later. You had mentioned right over here, um, you had mentioned that you're going to be playing, you know, several different guys at certain positions and stuff. And I, I guess I'm just curious, like, how long do you think the filling out period is going to go for you? Is it going to be after week one, you'll kind of reassess? Or do you think it's going to be a filling out period for like the first couple of weeks? Yeah, I think it, kind of yes to both. We were going to reassess always every week. Um, but the you know body of work over two, three, four weeks. I love the idea. I'd love to be doing it one week one through twelve of rotating, having some depth. Uh, you really, I think about the defensive side. We need these guys playing with great effort, flying to the ball. And there's going to be an occasion where they get a little tired, and they feel confident and say, you know what, give me a blow because my buddy's in the game and he can do it. Jonathan, uh, do you know Tom Herman personally, and what do you know about his teams? from Ohio State, Houston, and Texas. Yeah, I don't know him uh, deeply personally. Uh, I've just got to respect you. Look at the offensive side of the ball and what he's been able to do and the success he had at Houston and really did some good things. I thought at Texas winning some games and bowl games and all of that. So I've got a bunch of respect for him. A little more on Childs. You've been a quarterback at the high, high major college football level. You know what it's like to go out there the first time as a starter. He does not know that yet. Do you get a sense for his personality how that's going to be, or you just don't know till till the pin gets pulled? You know, I I think he'll settle in. Um, you know, I, again, he knew he last year he knew he was going into games, and so just like a starting quarterback, you know, you're going out there. He's just taking the first step. Um, I think uh, he's definitely gonna have some nerves, excitement, just like everybody on the field's gonna have. Um, he'll be confident in these opening plays because he'll he'll weigh in on what those plays are. And then he needs to just go let it rip. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.